Hey, deserve listeners, I'm going back and re-watching the season, knowing what we know now. Let's watch. Zay, what are we fighting about in this moment? We are fighting over the difference, you can't get them, between the word good and the word great. Oh, tell me more. This one doesn't seem to think there's a difference between good and great. I think that it's just another example of how bad this first day was for the two of them. And I've already been over what I think happened here. I think uh, she was looking for reassurance or they were trying to communicate to each other uh, that they uh, maybe things were starting to get better. And I think what happened was they asked, she asked about last night or something and she's like, last night was great. And he's like, yeah, last night was good. They said, oh, we had such a great night. I said, it was so good. It was so, so good. So at the very least, you would think that Zeneb in this moment would go, hmm, well, I guess when you put it that way, because you could say the opposite, and I don't think either are accurate or slam dunk indications. If someone came to me and said, I had a great time last night, and then, or no, uh, if I saw two people, one person said, you know, last night was great. And the other person was like, oh my God, yeah, last night was so good. It was so good. One potential conclusion is the person that said great is actually a lower degree of enthusiasm because of the way they said it, right? Yeah, last night was great. Oh my God, last night was so good. It was so good. Who knows what really happened, but I suspect that if he just said, yeah, last night was good, the way that she kind of portrays it, she would refute this. She would say, that's not the way you said it. You said it a lot more uh, subdued, you know, or something. So, you know, it's just more of that seeing the world through a certain lens that is affected by one's past that makes one extremely sensitive and overly preoccupied with being abandoned and betrayed. Oh, tell me more. This one doesn't seem to think there's a difference between good and great. They said, oh, we had such a great night. I said, it was so good. It was so, so good. It was good. And here we are in all this trouble because I didn't say great. Yeah, I remember this at the time that he, you know, he's being hostile in this moment. I think he thinks, and I think other partners to him might interpret it as a playful hostility that is, a, you know, opening a door to be like, hey, understand that I really love you and I would be with you. But looked at a different way and perhaps the way Zeneb looks at him right now is that he's being pretty harsh, that he's being a little exaggeratory right now. You know, it just kind of depends. I think it's just another example of how they're just missing each other. I th he thinks he's trying to, it's sort of like if someone were to accuse you of cheating, right? They're like, are you cheating on me? And, you're, and the way you respond is like, oh my God, what? No. I am not cheating on you, you know, because you're not cheating. You're getting hostile, you're getting angry, like, you, you get angry. You think, how dare you accuse me of, no, I'm not cheating. So it, I think he thinks he's in that zone where he's over uh, emoting or going into that zone of emotion to demonstrate that I can't believe that you would accuse me that I would think last night wasn't awesome and great and good and all the wonderful, comp all the wonderful words just because I said it was good. No, I felt it was awesome last night. Don't accuse me of that. So I, I think he thinks he's being convincing, but I, I think it's actually perturbing her. It was so good. It was so, so good. It was good. And here we are in all this trouble because I didn't say great. I said good. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Semantic. If it was great. You crazy you little say. semantic. Stickler. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that's rough, rough. Like we're gonna have so much beef after these games. Really? Why, because I'm so passive aggressive. <laughs> that and because you think that I'm. That's interesting, so she introduced that term. I don't think it's great that he used it later, but she used it before he did. Okay. I will be your instructor. Does it make you less attracted to me that I am not good at those things? <laughs> no, it's just cute. You told me you can cook. Knowing what I know now, I don't know if I'm just reading into it, but they seem to be extremely disconnected at this point. There's a way that they talk to each other. I think when I first saw it, I thought, oh, they're just being playful or something. But I would imagine that the two of them feel even at odds with each other, even though they're being playful or being nice to each other. I think that 
they might be actively building contempt, the sort of way that you might talk to a stranger that you have to deal with, but you don't want to deal with. I don't know if I'm just, what do you think? I would make it a home, pod blankets. Pod blankets. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you want to like maybe pick up your towel sometime and maybe not like throw it across the coffee table. Did I do that? Yeah, or like on the floor, just like throw it across the sink or throw it across the tub. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with making a request like this, but, and who knows if the conversation was a lot longer than this, I suspect it was, but this request seems to come in a strange place of the conversation. They, they, I think he opened the conversation by saying, how do you, what do you think will, or her, anyway, one of them asked the question, what, what are we going to be like when we get married or if we get married and what, what's our house going to be like? And then she you know, leads into this. You know, this is, there's just a different tone. And if this was the only thing that had happened today, then I'm guessing it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But given everything else, it just, I'm guessing for Cole, this feels like, okay, yet another reason why you're nitpicking me. <laughs> and you seem extremely confident in the vibe that you have about this. You know, it's not just that you think I'm a complete jerk face idiot for doing that, but you feel like you're completely valid in having that. Because there's a totally different way to say this. And we can use this as a jumping off point. If you have a request, marriages, long-term relationships are filled with requests of each other. And almost all couples will botch it most of the time. I find that, or just, I don't know, maybe it's because the couples that come into my office tend to have this problem, but we just don't have this protocol in our society. Think about the requests that you have of your partner. And of course you would have thousands of requests about towels, about lovemaking, about the future, about the way you have fights, about using deodorant or about um, when you go to bed or, you know, waking up in the middle of the night or snoring or, you know, there's just so many requests because you're in each other's shit and you're gonna get on each other's nerves or, you also depend on each other. Requests about children. I want you to parent differently. You know, there's a thousand different requests right there. Or I request that you listen to me more. I request that you make me feel more loved, that kind of thing. And so we need to recognize that requests are normal. And we also need to recognize there's a, a helpful, healthy way of making the request. And there's also a helpful, healthy way of responding to requests. You don't always have to give in or oblige a request, but you have to acknowledge it and also reward its vulnerability because most people will do it passively or hostily. So if she had said something like, we are different people with different, we don't, we haven't up until this point known each other in terms of the way we like our place to be. I like things to be clean. I don't know about you. And so it's just me, but when you threw the towel, um, it, it, it bugged me. Uh, it's not your fault. I, I could be a little overly clean. I don't know. But when you did that, it just felt like it's something that kind of irked me. Uh, that's, that's, I'm, I own those feelings. You know, it's just me. The temptation in that moment is to say, well, all women would be this way, the way that <laughs> this season, like they always gender everything. Or to say everyone would be upset about a towel like that. Even if 99% of the world scientifically would react the same way as you, to triangulate the rest of the world to make your point is a hostile act. To say, you, you are weird and I am right. Me and, me and the entire world, we agree that what you did with the towel was ridiculous and stupid. You don't need to do that. It's overly hurtful. It's, it, it can provoke the other person to defensiveness, particularly if it's not true, right? Because he could say, I have lots of, I, my whole entire family throws towels everywhere. What's the big deal? Or I've had previous partners that were messier than I was. So what are you saying? So you just don't want to invoke this, just own it. I would like it to be this way. I don't, I don't think you're wrong, but I'm just making a request. Could you do that for me, please? That's all you got to say. But let's rewind and watch the way she said. Pod blankets. Pod blankets. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you want to like maybe pick up your towel sometime and maybe not like throw it across the coffee table. Did I do that? Yeah, or like. I mean, I will say it's not super hostile. She's like, if you could maybe. So I could see him, I could see someone else given a different vibe of a day 
where he, but particularly if he makes this face, if you're making the request, you want to temper it a little bit. But Cole could have reacted differently given the way she, you know, he, he could say something like, oh, um, yeah, but I'm guessing for him, he feels like he's been criticized a lot about things that he feels aren't fair. And so it's harder for him to hear a, a more in the zone fair uh, request. Like on the floor, just like throw it across the sink or throw it across the tub. Are you being passive aggressive? Mm -mm. Okay, just checking. So we got to be honest with each other and nip it in butt. Okay, so I, I think he's using that term because she used it. I don't know. And then I think he's also legitimately asking, I think is a way of trying to gauge her mood. And he says, are you being passive aggressive? She says, uh-uh. I think that was a successful exchange because he, he's like, are you super angry at me right now the way you were about that other thing? She's like, no, no, I'm, I think, saying, no, I'm just making a request. And then I think he adjusts based on that data. I think that's what we saw. I throw it across the tub. Are you being passive aggressive? Mm -mm. Okay, just checking. So we got to be honest with each other and nip it in bud. Like me telling you that you're passive aggressive all the time. Exactly. Day, like day two, give it to me. <laughs> yeah, I remember this, that I thought maybe this will actually, I think this specific exchange gave me a lot of hope <laughs> and thinking that well if he can in his way because if I were there I'd say let's use a different term than passive aggressive uh, um, so, um, so but anyway for them it seems like she receives it but this could be one of those moments where she is on the surface receiving it, but on the inside cataloging data points to blast him on later. But I think the exchange is in essence good in that he's like, okay, if we're gonna be honest, I want you to be honest with, because he says that, I, for, I forgot this bit. He's like, I want you to tell me up front. Because I think what he's saying is, as soon as I throw the towel, just tell me. As soon as I leave to go to the gym, uh, just tell me that you're upset. Just just tell me straight up. Don't hide it from me. Don't get in a bad mood because of it. Like, give me a chance, I think is what he's saying, which I think is healthy. And he's also additionally saying, but it's very brief, and this is why therapy is good, because you can really al allow things to breathe. And with my trainees, I'm often, when I watch their sessions, I'm like, you should have talked about that one sentence for half an hour because there's a lot there. Don't just let those things go by because a lot is packed in there and they probably aren't really understanding each other. But I think for him, he's saying to her, making a request, it's kind of passive, saying, can you please, one, tell me right away, and two, don't become like hostile to me and don't punish me in the way you did earlier today. Just tell me you didn't like something so I can prove to you that whatever is in your head isn't true, I think is what he's saying. Did I do that? Yeah, or like on the floor, just like throw it across the sink or throw it across the tub. Are you being passive aggressive? Mm -mm. Okay, just checking. So we gotta be honest with each other and nip it in bud. Like me telling you that you're passive aggressive all the time. Exactly, day, like day two, give it to me. <laughs> And then she accepts it. She's like, yeah. And that seems to indicate that she knows she has a problem with that and has given him permission to use that term and to give her that feedback. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know. I will try to have it fixed by like maybe day four. Maybe just tell me if I'm being in your face too much because I do feel like I come on very strong. Yeah, I remember that. that and I remember having tremendous hope given that she seems to be owning her issue this is the first indication it, it looks like she knows that she has problems, that she has interpretation issues, perception issues, and will get overly hostile because of her thinking about things too much, the way people will say. So uh, wh what happened to this? What happened to this element? Or was it just a saying that she says, but she doesn't really um, believe it or doesn't re it doesn't really it's not genuine I don't know what do you think when I feel like I want your attention and I want to be in your face <laughs> I just don't want you to be like can you give me some space that's all you need to tell me no I don't mind it at all yeah I remember that too she, she says just tell me you want some space 
I'm, I'm thinking that comes from history for her because there's really not a lot of indication that that's what he wants. In fact, I would argue he doesn't want space. When there's tension, he's like hovering over her. <laughs> I don't think he likes space. I think he actually is kind of a little anxious and wants to be close. But I think she interprets him going to work out in the morning as wanting space from her, not just wanting to work out. It wasn't anyone different in the pods. I just don't run around saying those things to people, telling a guy all these sweet things, being that like open and honest about my feelings and... Have they changed? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, maybe I should back up. So then she says she's, she's not usually very open about her feelings and then he bids, he's like, have they changed? Do you still like me? And she says, no, I still like you, okay. It's been like a day. Yeah. Anything could happen over the next four weeks. Right. So. So you feel like I might fall out of love with you in the next four weeks? I don't feel like that's going to happen. It's just, that would be my greatest fear. That would be the most heartbreaking outcome. You would think that Zeneb, and maybe she did, receive what he's saying right here as a need for her, as an indication that he has a lot of investment in being with her, that he has some insecurities. That would be reassuring, I would imagine, that it's like, oh, not only is he not necessarily rejecting me, but he's worried that I'm going to reject him. He doesn't want me to reject him. You would think that would give you some confidence. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.